Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. My name is Hamza Kamil Ahmed. I am one of the authors in this paper. And uh, the other authors are Barat Tantawi and Ghad Ismail Said. Our affiliations are School of Computer Science, Canadian International College, uh, New Cairo, Egypt, and Computer Science Department, School of Science and Technology, Troy University, USA. Uh, we are happy to be in the sixth workshop on uh, Computer Modeling and Intelligence System, SMIS 2023. And we present our paper multi-image classification based on quantum-inspired convolutional neural network. Uh, as we go, uh, as we uh, gather here today, let us discuss the growing importance of multi-classification problem in the field of machine learning. These problems have found applications in diverse areas, such as autonomous driving, medical uh, diagnosing, and uh, language processing. And the key challenge we faced in handling the massive amount of required for training models to recognize multiple categories. However, when we deal with the large datasets, it becomes increasingly difficult for our models to differentiate between uh, distinct classes. As we progress in our research, let us join to, uh, to uh, overcome these challenges and continue to unlock the potential of machine learning. So from the slides, as the problem statement. The images means the problem complexity getting high. If we have images in our models, means the problem complexity getting high. So three common challenges with dealing with images. The first challenge is high dimensionality. The second challenge is noise and variations. And the third challenge is the data representation. And all of these challenges, it would be difficult to solve with the machine learning. So as, as in, in, in the figure below here, in machine learning, we have a more or we have many stages that we do manually. For example, the pre-processing stage or the segmentation, uh, segmentation, feature extraction, and the classification phase. For example, feature extraction with the manual way, it would take many or it would take so much time to finish. So CNN comes, the CNN models comes to save time. So all of these stages, we, ha we can have it in just one block. So with the input data or the input image, uh, uh, go through the just one block of CNN and we get the result. Moving to the figure on the right side of the slide that explain the relation between the performance of machine learning and the deep learning with the data size. So machine learning is doing better with the small training size. Deep learning is doing better with the large data set size. And here comes a very important question. How I can use a small data size that getting a very high performance in a short time? So can quantum help with that? We have here two, two, uh, two curves, the curve A and the curve B. So quantum would be A or B. We will see through this presentation. Uh, another dimension for the problem statement that in computer vision, convolutional neural networks or CNNs excel in feature extraction, but face issues like high complexity and overfitting. Quantum computing could potentially accelerate CNN training and inference. But practical implementation of quantum CNNs or QCNNs require further ad uh, adv uh, advancements in hardware and in software. Our literature review covers multi-classification using deep learning through classical and quantum approaches. We examine uh, models uh, including di dilated CNN, MRF and MRFnet, hybrid glove CNN, quantum inspired classifier, cubo based algorithms showing case, uh, showcasing uh, the diversity in current research as, as shown here in the table from uh, this is just a sample of the or all the research paper that we did in the literature review, just to show uh, the findings that we uh, that we got from this, and from this review, numerous numerous classical deep learning papers address multi-class images, cl uh, image classifications, and uh, while quantum papers are uh, like very few to do this, uh, and also classical models struggle with a small number of datasets and quantum models lake through evaluations. More research is indeed to enhance quantum deep learning for medical image classification. So all of these are like insights from our literature review. And also there are, uh, 
there are uh, like some drawbacks of the of the research paper that we found one of the drawbacks is that all the papers used uh, a small number of datasets such as the first paper here in this table titled I dilated or uh, dilated CNN model for image classification they just use two datasets two benchmark datasets menest and wet band uh, RS image and so on and the second drawbacks is most of the papers that tackle the multi-classification problem in our literature review they didn't use any measurement method to evaluate their models performance as the paper titled quantum inspired algorithms uh, for direct multi-classification and multi-respective uh, field cnn for segment uh, semantic segmentation of medical images many many papers they didn't actually use the evaluation metrics for example or to get the accuracy and this is some of one of the drawbacks of the most important drawbacks moving to our uh, proposed model actually our proposed model consists of two phases the pre-processing phase as shown here the pre-processing phase and uh, the pre-processing uh, the pre-processing phase and the qcnn phase so for the pre-processing phase we did normalization normalization and resizing so our study in pre-processing images by resizing them to 28 by 28 pixels and normalize them to zero or one range zero to one range mitigating data distribution and scale disparities after normalization images uh, after normalization the images pass through a quantum convolutional layer followed by classical layer and a fully connected layer for classification uh, we can see here from 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 the from the proposed or from the figure that represents the architecture of the proposed uh, image classification. As I said, the pre-processing. Then we have the convolutional layer after we process the data, and after the convolutional layer, we have a classical CNN layers, and with that we pass it to the fully connected layer. And after the fully connected layer, we got the result. So either class 1 or 2, or 0 or 1, 3 or 4, till class n. Okay. Uh, and this is the second part, or this is like a zoom in in the, uh, in the architecture. Uh, we have here, as I said, the convolutional layer. So this is the details figure for the convolutional layer, or we can say the block diagram, the block diagram, uh, of the quantum part of the uh, proposed uh, QCNN. And here I would like to discuss our paper approach to quantum encoding and convolutional, which are essential components in our hyperquantum class uh, classical model. Initially, the input data is embedded into a quantum state using a choosing method. In our paper, we use nine qubits and select angle embedding as our techniques. This method encodes the classical information into a rotational gates or an, a rotational angles, such as a Rx of the quantum gates, offering a compact representation of the data or of the input data, particularly for continuous or real value data. By leveraging the, the unique properties of, of, uh, of quantum computing, angle embedding allow our model to potentially capture complex pattern. After embedding input data into quantum state, a random quantum circuit, as shown in the figure here uh, in front of you, is applied. This circuit consists of randomly chosen single qubits, gates, and controlled not gates. Acts as a nonlinear transformation, potentially an evil interacts uh, pattern in the data. Following and after the random quantum cir circuit, we apply the quantum convolutional step, which process the image using quantum circuit. The image pass through multiple quantum filters with the output tensor shape determined by the quantum kernel size and bedding type, an activation function such as ReLU, sigmoid, or tange in, uh, is then applied uh, to introduce a non-linearity. Lastly, we measure each qubit in the computational phases using Bowley Z operator. The expectation values serves as features which are fed into the classical CNN layer in the classical portion of the model. Just uh, like uh, 
to uh, be before, be before uh, talking about the result and, and, and discussion, we would uh, introduce our data set. So we used seven benchmark data sets, seven benchmark data sets, such as brain MRI, binomial menist, uh, breast menist, or organ menist, fashion menist, uh, cipher 10, and chest menist. Some of them are medical images, images data sets, and others are not medical image data set. Uh, the number of samples for all the data sets ranges, for, uh, ranges from uh, 253 till 112.120,000 sample. And the number of classes ranges from 2 till 11 class. Uh, for our results, we have four experiments that are conducted. The first experiment, we can say it like varying kernel size. The second experiment, we applied the quantum convolutional layer. The third experiment, we used the seven benchmark data sets with our proposed QCNN. The fourth experiment, comparison to the state of the art models. So for the first experiment on the left side of the screen, it's, it is a comparison of using different kernel sizes in terms of accuracy. From this figure, we can uh, conclude that the best kernel size that we that, that we got is 20 by 20. We got accuracy, it's about 90, uh, uh, 98 point, uh, 35% and uh, the worst kernel size that we got is one by one. We got uh, accuracy 73.2%. Uh, percent and for the second experiment on the right side of the screen it's the result before and after applying the convolutional layer so the accuracy before applying the convolutional layer or applying our proposed model it's 0.92 and after applying the convolutional layer it's 0.98 which improved a lot for the third experiment that we did we use the seven benchmark datasets that I explained before with the evaluation metrics like accuracy, precession, recall, and F1 score to train it on our model. So for brain MRI, we got 98. For penomena menace, we got 99. For breast menace, we got 96. For cipher 10, we got 90. For chest menace, we got 99. And so on for the all the table. And for experiment four on the right side of the screen, it's the performance of the proposed model versus the state of the art models in terms of accuracy. So the first uh, data set, brain MRI, we got 98.96%, uh, while the HQC CNN got 97.8%. And this is one of the state-of-the-art models. And the second one, we got 99.56%, while the AOC caps got 93.1%, and this is the second state-of-the-art model. The third state-of-the-art model, we got the pressed menist 96%, while we got for the FBVET 88.46%, and this is the, the third state-of-the-art model. The fourth state-of-the-art model, we get 98.22%, uh, uh, and uh, the, the other one, we got 98.99%, uh, 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 we got in our model 99%, I'm sorry for, the, for that, I made uh, uh, here... Uh, yes, yes, for, for chest menace, we got 9995 and for CantNet, we got 98.8, .8, and so on for the all of the table. And for the conclusion and future work, the paper uh, primary contribution, we can summarize it in the following points. The first point is a new QCNN architecture is proposed. The second point is the proposed QCNN is applied to the multi-class image classification problem. The third point is seven benchmark datasets are used to evaluate the proposed model. The third or the fourth point is a comprehensive analysis between all the proposed model and the state-of-the-art 
uh, between the proposed model and the state of the art models is considered. We face challenges in applying the proposed QCNN to the large scale images task, uh, image task uh, due to the limitation of quantum hardware, which constrain input, uh, input image size uh, and the number of the neural network or the number of network layers. And in our future work, we plan to implement the proposed QCNN using simpler circuits to solve this problem, also reduce the training time. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to see you again.